So I want to talk about today people who maybe feel like they're being punished in life. Like they feel like they've got bad luck, like nothing works out. They feel like they're not on the right path. They feel that they are weak, insignificant and ineffectual. So there are two actual reactions that people have when they feel like this. One of them is like they feel broken, uh, they feel broken, they feel sad. But when you stay in this state of inferiority for too long, you can start to go numb to this feeling of brokenness and sadness and where you actually try to overcompensate. You know, for example, if, if you feel like you're weak, if you feel like you're a coward, uh, you feel like everyone else is stronger than you, then you will overcompensate by trying to act tough. You know, there was a police officer who says, you know, when there's a group of people and there's something, like, happening, uh, you don't go for the biggest guy, you actually go for the smallest guy, because he's the guy who's going to want to do the most damage. The weaker people are the ones that want to overcompensate. Um, that's the sort of thing that gives it away that you're weak and insecure. You're always trying to act tough. Uh, where the, the strong people are just kind of like, you know, more relaxed. Uh, this also for the underachiever. They overcompensate by lifting themselves up and putting others down. Or the least experienced or the least skilled. Uh, off, they're the ones that offer the most advice. The you know the expert always offering expert advice. Often it's unsolicited. But no matter how much you overcompensate, you can't get rid of that feeling of inferiority or weakness or being despised because that's not the solution. So welcome to my channel. Welcome to this playlist, the Light Path. Uh, this playlist runs parallel to my regular motorcycle content. It's mostly about like ideas about life from my own, you know, and biblical and spiritual based insights. So before I go into the four reasons that causes life to punish you, I want you to recognize that you are born with the potential to overcome the challenges of the world. I'm not going to say you're born strong or you're born wise. Everyone is born with the ability to naturally grow and become strong and overcome the challenges of life you don't need to do things you don't need to do much to to grow stronger to overcome this world the reason why people become weak is not because you know they're not doing the things to grow strong it's because they're doing things that poison right that's how they become weak and when they become weak they try to overcompensate they try to work extra hard because they realize they're weak they're falling behind and they try to uh, work extra hard and even with that working extra hard you're still not reaching to that level and it seems like other people are getting there effortlessly it's because you are poisoning you need to stop poisoning your life it's the poisoning of your life that's making you become weak if you didn't have that poison there is not much effort you need to actually grow strong to overcome the challenges of this world it will just happen naturally and so uh, I'm going to talk about four points uh, that are causing people to poison their lives, which is making them weak and making them feel like life is punishing them. The first thing that you could do that will cause life to punish you is becoming arrogant or being arrogant. The idea that arrogance will cause life to punish you is talked about a lot. I'm personally lucky enough to experience this probably multiple times. As harsh as the lesson may be, it's the best thing that happens in terms of like growth and maturity. Have you ever seen that person who, you know, while they're an adult, they still have that remnant of the childhood personality? Or, you know, that pain in the butt work colleague, or family member who plays like meaningless power tactics like gets overexcited about winning pointless little games everyone else sees through it um, finds it really annoying and wonders where this person finds the energy for their pointless and pathetic agendas these are the people that haven't been taught the lessons of life and that's why they've still got that like childish brat inside them but the interesting question that I want to talk about is are these lessons that life teaches you when you're arrogant are they like just are they just like materialistic are they just 
physical or is there a cosmic or supernatural element to it you can say that it's just natural and material and physical you know if you are if you're arrogant and uh, you keep messing around with everyone eventually you're gonna mess around with the wrong person and life's gonna catch up to you but I believe on the other hand that there is a like a cosmic or a supernatural element to it like God is setting you straight I made this observation because I've experienced and I've seen you know the misfortune the lessons that life teaches you usually comes from an unrelated place you know uh, you could be being arrogant and, and rude to five or six different people then all of a sudden out of nowhere this dog just starts coming up to you and biting you. It's got nothing to do with actually your arrogant actions and that's why you know I always think about it is it you know the timing and the coincidence of it you can't help think that maybe it is a divine act you know it's it's God that's punishing you for your arrogance the second thing that causes life to punish you is a result of karma. I'm not really a fan of using the word karma a lot because you know what I talk about uh, is usually like of a biblical background um, and the word you know originated from like mysticism but I use it because it's you know because of its uh, because it's familiar and modern. There's also like um, an overlap between karma and my previous point on arrogance but the key difference is that arrogance is a repeated behavior where karma is as a result of a one-off a one bad thing that you did it's less likely that karma will come back and bite you on a direct like material or physical terms because like because it's a one-off it doesn't get a chance to punish you then and there but it could still happen you know that jealous spouse can find out one way or another sometime down the track and even the Bible says you should uh, start running but when people talk about karma they kind of imply supernatural it's a supernatural it's a divine punishment it's a cosmic you know something you've done wrong and you know you're, you're gonna get supernaturally punished for that but at the same time I want to stop here and pull the um, the card from biblical roots like that Jesus came into this world so that he can give people forgiveness um, that is what Christianity is about, is about that is what the Bible is about if you've done something wrong or, and if you're truly sorry right if you change your ways if you change your thinking you know some people in the past like they just do cruel things for the sake of it for fun for, for no real reason who knows what the deep reason is maybe it's just inherent evil um, and they do cruel things and that's where karma comes back and life teaches you a lesson but you have a chance to sort of wake up to yourself and if you repent if you truly are sorry right you pray to God then God will forgive you karma has no power over you in that situation the third point that causes life to punish you is double standards you know in these like videos that I make I like to keep it relevant to both like Christian people and also non-believer people I, I, I always try to hope that the points that I make are relevant to both so you could be like an atheist but you still sort of see the value um, in the points that I'm trying to make but in this point I will address you know both sides but I want to first talk about um, the Christian audience being a Christian from what the Bible teaches you what church teaches you there's a certain moral standard that you need to follow as a Christian um, and these moral standards are distinct from everyone else in the world who are not you know deceit debauchery sexual immorality violence hatred you know lack of forgiveness these are sort of um, Christians don't you know get involved in and it's one thing to make a mistake right maybe you made a mistake and you've done one of these things you were tempted and you just made a mistake um, so I'm not actually talking about that in double standards I said a double standard which means that these things when these things are standard 
right? They're not just one-off mistakes. They're standard parts of your life. You know, in the Bible, it says, God says to certain people, He says, I wish you were either hot or cold, right? But because you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. So God is actually saying, I wish you were hot. To me, hot is like um, full-on, you know, devoted Christian. Or cold. Cold means you're not religious at all. You don't know anything about God. God says, I wish you were one of them. But he says, but you're not. You're you're half-half. And that is what makes God feel sick. The other thing about um, double standards, like from a non-religious perspective, is it just makes you lose trust and integrity like people won't trust you they won't take you seriously it damages your relationship with people Um, people will start uh, to harbor hatred for you and that's how life punishes you uh, double standards you could say that some people say double standards like um, creates an internal conflict inside the person but I actually feel that the worst part of double standards or the worst part of dealing these people is I feel that they're not actually aware like they don't they don't have that awareness of their own double standard and and maybe that's the actual problem that they're not aware of because if they were aware they would they would stop doing it and to me it's this lack of their own self-awareness of these double standards which is the worst and most frustrating and sickening aspect of it the fourth thing that will cause life to punish you is lack of faith and again uh, you don't have to be a Christian or religious to see this as true there's a lot of people who are not religious at all but they can see outcomes of people who are like negative and pessimistic um, like they don't have that bounce in life like it's, it's evident uh, but again, on for the Christian perspective, even more, right? Where Christians go on their daily lives and they have no anticipation, no hope that like God can intervene, God can change your situation. You know, just this lack of faith in God, um, that that God can do something unexpected. God can give you an unexpected blessing, or that God is present in your everyday life with a lot of Christians that just walk around empty dry they don't have that that connection with God lack of faith this is what causes life to punish you and you know faith is not I think a lot of Christians don't under, even understand faith faith is not convincing you're trying to convince yourself of something trying to convince yourself that God exists, trying to convince yourself that, you know, God is going to give you what you're praying. It's not about convincing yourself. It's about wrestling with God. You know, wrestling, knowing that God is there, wrestling with God, keeping on going until God gives you your prayers. Not just, oh, if I just convince myself that it will happen, that it will happen. No, that is not faith. That is not Christianity. But wrestling with God, you know, keep on going back and forward with God. That is what faith is. That is what God wants to see. God wants to see your faith have an impact on your actions. You know, where you forgive someone for no other reason other than, you know, that you you know that God is there and you know that everyone is flawed. Not because you're going to get anything out of it. It's, you know, faith changes your actions so anyway that's all i wanted to talk about today i hope uh it was useful if you like this video if you like my content in general please uh please hit the like button please subscribe uh you can subscribe to this playlist as well if you're not interested in my other motorcycle content i've got the two sort of playlists mixed in this one channel and make a comment tell me what you think And if you are riding a motorcycle, take it easy and ride safe.